But when you hand your affairs to Allah, even if you are struggling, even if you are going through challenges, your health, your wealth, your family, you will be such a happy person. You will be smiling within you, let alone just on your face. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us that happiness. If we look at the Quran, it has in it a lot of messages that are very, very powerful. They are reminders. When Allah blesses you, He knows what you deserve and He knows what perhaps is better for you right now. Sometimes you and I don't deserve luxury in this world because it may result in us turning away from Allah. So Allah says, I'm not going to give it to you. And you are so upset and angry and praying and asking and saying, Oh Allah, I want this, I want this, I want this. Allah says, I know I'm not going to give it to you because I love you. If I'm going to give it to you, it's not going to be good for you. You and I will not have a good relationship. You will forget me. You will go away from me. You are going to drop into sin and that which is deviant such that in the hereafter, the eternal life will be lost. The best thing, let me let you not have what you want for a few years and then when you come to me I will give you everything you want subhanallah but man especially those who don't believe Allah says nay you love that which is right in front of you and you forget that which is to come which is eternal you love this worldly life such that in it you want what you want but you are forgetting that the eternal life sorry you love this temporary life and you are forgetting that the eternal life that is to come is the reality it is what you need to work for what is your wealth going to do for you do you know that wealth when it is given to you is a very big test from allah children when they are given to you they are a very big test from allah listen to what allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in surah al-anfal verse number 27 Ya ayyuhalladhina amanu la takhunu Allah wa rasoola wa takhunu amanatikum wa antum ta'lamoon O you who believe O you who believe do not attempt to deceive Allah or to deceive his messenger you won't be able to you are deceiving yourself what do you think you're doing? Oh, you who believe, be loyal, be faithful unto Allah and His Messenger. You say, La ilaha illallah. You know it means there is none worthy of worship besides Allah, but you are worshiping everything besides Allah and you are not worshiping Allah. That is the essence of Tawheed. To worship Allah alone. I bear witness. There is none worthy of worship besides Allah. Then I am worshipping everyone besides Allah and everything besides Allah. That is unrealistic, unacceptable. Then I say, the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, is the messenger of Allah. And his message means nothing to me, subhanallah. Imagine when you believe someone is the messenger of Allah, you would know that that message he's coming with for you is an honor. It is a privilege. Really, we are privileged that the man reached us. Imagine someone sends you a letter from somewhere and the postman looks for you, finds you and delivers it in your hand. A very important message. You're going to open it and be grateful, grateful to the one who sent the message and grateful for the fact that he chose the best of the messengers that the, he actually found you and gave it to you. Honor. So the same applies, the Qur'an, the Sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ, it is an honor that it came to us through this blessed messenger. We are saying, Muhammadun Rasulullah ﷺ, Muhammad is the messenger of Allah ﷺ, but do we really consider him a messenger? Allah says, don't deceive. Don't attempt to deceive Allah or his messenger. You are not going to get anywhere if you try that. And Allah says, do not betray you know, the term khiyana refers to betrayal. Do not betray Allah or his messenger. Do not betray what you have been entrusted with, amana. Amana meaning a trust. Whatever you've been entrusted with, primarily the shahada that you hold, the deen, the faith that you have, don't betray, don't be fake. Be as genuine as possible. Where you have gone wrong, quickly make amends and understand this life is definitely a test. I've said it again and again. You know what? 
the fact that you didn't choose who you were born to, where you were born, where you came, what color you were, already proves that there is an examiner testing us here. We are not in control. The questions are asked by the examiner, not by the one being tested. So you choose very little. You actually choose how to respond to the situations you are put into by the examiner. Why are you black? Why is someone else white? Why is another person red? Why yellow? Because Allah wants to test you. That's all. If it was for you, each one would have chosen his own color or nationality. But Allah says, no. Will you respect each other? Will you reach out to each other? Will you understand that there is no value for a color besides just that it is a test from Allah for you, for I, for every one of us? And the same applies to everything else. Your financial level, when a deal comes to your business, wallahi, it's a test. Allah wants to watch, is it going to make you arrogant? I promise you, when money comes quick, it is a very, very big test. Those who have not worked hard for their money, I would like to think the majority of them, it messes around with their attitude. It makes them think that they are ruling the world and they don't understand. Allah is the one in charge. They think they can do what they want because as the olders used to say, the elderly used to say, they don't know how many twenties make a hundred for them. It was just one twenty and it was a hundred for them. Subhanallah. Those who worked hard, they know how many ones make one hundred. May Allah make it easy because they earned it one by one by one. But if you got ten thousand one shot, you don't even know. It's a test from Allah. I'm not saying they are bad in attitude, but I'm saying it messes with their attitude. It's a challenge. When you are a multi-billionaire and you can come and polish the shoes of someone else, wallahi, you are a man who is worth looking at. You are a man who has achieved because your money humbled you. It brought you down. When you are a powerful figure and you can still greet and talk to the people in a proper way, you are someone who in the eyes of Allah is trying to pass that test. If you don't have what you want and it turned you away from Allah, you are as big a loser as a person who has what he wants and it turned him away from Allah. The common factor is both of them turned away from Allah due to the condition they were put in. What's the difference? This man got so much, he forgot Allah. That man doesn't have what he wants. He forgot Allah. He's angry with Allah. So what's the difference? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keep us happy. When Allah gives you, say alhamdulillah. That is why on the day of judgment, a caller will call. Where are those who used to praise Allah upon all conditions? Bring them forth. They deserve VIP treatment here. Alladheena kanu yahmadoon Allah fi sarra'i wa darra. Those who used to praise Allah in good condition, in bad condition, it didn't change their relationship with Allah. It made them better. You ask me who is struggling. I tell you the richest of the lot are struggling more than the poorest. Those who have seen more money in their lives find it more difficult to adjust than those who never saw that money. Their life was always the way it is. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy for us. So be humble, be calm. When you have, Allah wants to see. Do you look at those around you who don't have and quietly reach out to them? Empower them, look at them, give them. Treat them well. That is building your hereafter. That is fulfilling the trust of Allah. Allah created people around you, not for nothing. He chose them as a test. You will have problems with some of them. You will have friendship with some of them. You will have dealings with some of them. You will have so much with some of them. Allah just wants to see, are you still going to make us the focus of your life? Or will you dwindle and drown in this worldly life? In Surah Al-A'la, again, Allah reminds us of something similar, saying that, you know what? Man loves that which is now the worldly life, and he's prepared to pay as a price the eternal life. You want comfort in this world, and what's the payment you're paying? The comfort of eternity. That's not worth it. A person who believes knows that that's not, not worth it at all. So let's look at the verse, the next verse. Verse number 28 of the same surah, Surah Al-Anfal, surah number 8 of the Quran. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, In wa'lamu annama amwalukum wa awladukum fitna wa anna Allah indahu we want you to know that your wealth and your children, your offspring are just a test. They are a test. They are a trial for you. 
we have given them to you short term. Your children are not actually your children. They belong to Allah. Biologically, they are yours because Allah allowed you to enjoy the statement, they are mine. Yet, where were they prior to their birth? With Allah. Where will they be after they die? With Allah. So whose are they? They are Allah's, not mine. Temporary, for a few years. so much for listening to the short message i pray that it has increased you in a little bit of motivation and hope and the same applies to all of us jazakumullah khair assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh